How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my loving hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is a victory. Hallelujah to the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Are my living What's going on? Get in here, quick. Are the others following you? I thought you'd gone to the tomb. I did, John, but when I got there, the stone had been rolled away. What? Yes. Oh, Peter, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they laid him. At once, Peter and John ran to the tomb. John outran Peter. Peter was still in deep pain for deserting and denying his beloved Jesus. He ran with a huge lump of fear, dread, and guilt, tying his stomach into knots. John got to the tomb first. You go in. 
I'll keep watch. John, John, I don't understand what happened here. John, get in here. The body is not here, but they took his body. They, they, the linen body wrapping is still here. The strips from his head are rolled in the corner. All is clean. What has happened? Get in here now, John. Ah, so this is what they meant. The temple that he was talking about on the third day. That's why he didn't fight back on Friday. Peter, Peter, don't you get it? No one has come in and stolen the body. Those linens are left there. The head wrappings are rolled up because they are not needed. Jesus doesn't need them. Not only could he raise up Lazarus, but he... Don't you see, Peter? You don't think? But he was dead. Dead people don't come back to life. Nah, it can't be. John, if it is true... Oh, no, John, I left him. I said that I did not know him. What will he do to me? It's too much to think about. I got to go home. Mary remained outside the tomb even after Peter and John went home. She had not seen what John had seen in faith. She remained outside weeping. After the two men had left, she finally got enough courage up to look inside the tomb. She sees two angels sitting where the body of Jesus had been laid. They spoke to her, Woman, why are you weeping? They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Mary turned around and saw a man she did not recognize. The man spoke to her. Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? You keep the grounds here. You are in charge of the garden here. If you carried him away, please tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Mary. Rabani, teacher! Jesus, do not hold on. Jesus. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary ran. This time there was joy, amazement, faith, hope, and feelings too great for words to begin to describe. The trip was fast. She did not have to breathe. She couldn't. She ran so fast that she flew, or she should have flown. The rest of her, her heart, her soul, and her spirit were flying. Nothing could stop her now. She pounded on, yes, she pounded on that door, crying out to all. Open up! Open up! Open up! I have seen him! I have seen him! I have seen the Lord! And he is alive. Please join me in the call to worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain. Alleluia. Rejoice then even in your distress. God has claimed us as his own. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please stand as you are able for our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross? Alleluia. 
our sins to our Lord and one another. You'll find that in your bulletin. Risen and rising Lord, we confess that too often we live as though we had not been given new life in you. We muddle after our own schemes. We follow after wayward leaders and cherish broken dreams. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we keep the good news of your resurrection to ourselves. Hoard the blessings that you give and live as though we were still on the path of despair. Give us your spirit, the spirit of new life, the spirit, the spirit of loving care for all others around us. Make us truly Easter people in this broken world. Fill us with the spirit that we might overflow with a serving that proclaims your very presence with us. I have the honor and the privilege by the grace of God to announce to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and free, free to share the steadfast love of God with all. Our Kyrie. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy 
is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. and saying the prayer of the day. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts uh, chapter 10, 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Uh, the psalm, please read responsively. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. 
The Lord has punished me severely, but he did, did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. Enter me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's feeling. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please stand if you are able. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The gospel comes to us this morning according to Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. And they go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. So this is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, looking, taking hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. That's where they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the kids forward for the children's message. Come on up. Brianna, there was a time where you would come up. Right, you guys? That whole row there, they'd come up and sit with me. They're too old. Now you guys have to come up and help me get up off of the floor. Okay? All right, so how many of you decorated Easter eggs this week? Anybody? Anybody? You didn't do them yet? No? No? Anybody? Can you tell I did mine last night? I have pink fingers and blue fingers, and I got... I did mine. You did yours a couple days ago, or... Yeah? Okay, so I bought this kit. Pretty special. It's an eight-in-one kit. I could do eight different kinds of eggs. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So I did one... That stripe, do you know that you can put rubber bands around them before you dye them and then you get white stripes on them? I know, pretty cool, pretty cool, right? Some of them I did, just did plain old green ones or whatever. Did you do a plain old green one too? Yep, me too. Yep, and then this is just, you know, there's all kinds of Easter eggs, aren't there? This is one of the plastic ones that have, you put stuff in. Um, I even got a little, you what? Yours, you, you, yours will break? Oh, yeah? Look, at I had little baby ones. I have all kinds of them. This one I did last night when I was watching TV. I just kind of did some weird colors, right? You can do whatever you want for them. So, and, and egg, dying eggs is really fun. But you know what? I got to show you my favorite egg. This is my favorite egg of all, okay? Do you know why this is my favorite egg? It's got all kinds of stickers on it. Why? Because it's got stickers on it, right? Nope, you know 
That's why. It's empty. It's empty. I popped it, didn't I? Did that kind of sh shock you a little bit? No? Did you think it was crazy? You're not helping. <laughs> You're not helping. Did it surprise you? Yeah, like who goes around cracking eggs, right? Unless you're baking something, right? Well, I did that because I wanted to show you that you can get surprised and, and scared sometimes, but sometimes it's a wonderful thing. The sticker. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. We're talking today about somebody else who got surprised. Who got surprised today? Mary, when she went to go see Jesus in the, in the tomb, that monster rock, it is kind of squishy, isn't it? The monster rock had been rolled away. I mean, it would have taken many people to roll that big, huge stone away, but instead, it was rolled away, and Mary just panicked because she couldn't find Jesus in there. And then, what a surprise. She found out that he had actually been raised from the dead, and that Easter had really happened, right? And, and Jesus had told them all along that was what was going to happen, right? On the third day, I'm going to rise again, right? But it was hard to believe because they'd seen Jesus die on Good Friday. We had that where we talked about that, and all, all went dark. And then now today you see all the brightness and stuff, right? So it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing to celebrate that he is risen. I know, I don't know what that is. It's kind of cool, isn't it? All right, oops, I'm rolling eggs all over. Okay, so let's say a prayer, and then I've got eggs for you to take. Okay, you ready? It might be. Do you think I have a sticker? No, I have an egg full of fun things for you. Whew. It's going to be good. You're going to like it. Okay, ready? Let's say a prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the chance to celebrate your raising from the dead. We thank you that you gave your son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross to take away all of the sins that we do and to give us life everlasting and a chance to join you when our time comes as well. Please watch over these youngsters and all of those that have gathered in the church today. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Would you be so kind to grab the big basket there, that one in front, and make sure that all of the kids get an egg? Okay? Can you pick it up? Oh, I'll hold it. Yeah. I know. Take one. Okay, there you go. And then you're free to go back and have a seat. Wait to open them till you get back, though, so everything doesn't fly out, okay? Come on over, bud. Do we have any kids that didn't want to come up? Chris, do you want to see if there's any kids in the pews that didn't want to come up? Uh-oh, I got sunglasses. Who forgot their glasses? They won't fit me. My head's too big. There you go, babe. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was doing some reading this week about Easter, and I came across a poem that's called The Easter Hymn. It's a poem written by the American English poet named A. He Hausman. And in the poem, Hausman was not a confessing Christian. He was really actually trying to seek and understand God more. So listen to the words as he contends with the risen Christ, the idea of death and resurrection. It goes like this. If in that Syrian garden, angels slain, you sleep and know that you are dead in vain, nor even in dreams behold how dark and bright ascends in smoke and fire by day and night. The hate you died to quench and could but fan, sleep well and see no morning, son of man. But if the grave rent and the stone rolled by, at the right hand of majesty on high, you sit and sitting so remember yet your tears, your agony and bloody sweat, your cross and passion and the life you gave, bow hither out of heaven and see and save. Houseman was saying to Christ, if you can't hear this, and you have no idea what happened since you died, rest on. It's over. But if you rose to the right hand of God as you said you would, remembering your cross and your passion, look down from heaven and save. 
That's the thing about Easter. It gets your attention, even the attention of those who not, do not necessarily always believe. After all, how do they explain the story of the risen Jesus Christ? To live beyond death has been a constant longing of humanity for as long as people have watched others grow old and die, for as long as we have seen others die way too soon from sickness and tragedy. The longing is there not just as funeral times come around either. It is there when we pass through the shadow of near death and wonder even out loud about how much time we have left to live. We can feel that longing on days when things are falling apart or when our plans have gone astray and when we just don't know which way to turn. That longing for escape and peace can bring us to God. I remember a conversation I had a few years back with my grandson. He probably was around six or seven at the time. Aiden, most of you have met him, and if not, you will meet him. Aiden's been in the church more than most children were because of who his grandma is. He would spend time with me here at Christ the King when I was here the entire time, help me get the band set up, sing the service, help me clean up, wait for meetings. He'd be here all the time. I worked in churches for over 25 years, so it wasn't just this church. It was the next churches. If we go to church, Aiden and I, into anybody's church, he goes to the front row to sit down. Who does that? Only a pastor's grandson. He thinks we're supposed to sit in the front row, right? But I can remember, oh, best yet is, here's the best one. It was time for a Christmas program. It was about four or five. And he got up in the row, and I don't remember if Steph is in here, she would remember this, but they lined him up in front, and he stood there waiting because he didn't have a microphone. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited, and he was so mad. And at the, after the program was over, he said, Grandma, you have a microphone. Why don't I get one? It was just crazy. So here he is. He's this, this child that's been immersed and sitting in church for years and years and years. So because of all that time that he spent in the community with believers, we went to Bible camp together, all of that, it never dawned on me that there was any concern about what he believed and was learning until one particular day. Aiden and I were driving in the car, and just out of the blue, he looked at me and he said, Grandma, I don't believe in God. Here I was. I was a seminary student at the time. I was starting the process to become a pastor. I had engaged in an active grandson, so active that he actually confronted somebody in the fall and asked her why she had not been in church all summer. Right, Nancy? <laughs> yep. He's deeply engaged in this church. And yet he doesn't believe. I don't believe in God. And I'm panicking, thinking, what have I done wrong? I'm, you know, he, I'm bringing him here. He's learning all of this. What's going on? And instead of letting that, that frustration set in, I start to think, hey, this is an amazing teaching moment. <coughs> Excuse me. You see, at the time of the conversation, <coughs> Aiden's grandfather, whom he and his mother lived with, I need to get a drink of water. I'm not going to struggling for a minute, but it'll never work. Okay. At the time of this conversation, Aiden's grandfather, whom he and his mother lived with at the time, had passed away about a year ahead of time. Papa was in the middle of his uh, 50s. He was diagnosed with something weird in his stomach, so he went down to Rochester to get it checked, and he actually passed away in the hospital before he got in, or in the uh, motel room the night before he got to see the doctor. So it came as a total shock, total shock. So here's this five or six year old totally struggling with, where is God in this? He took away my papa, you know, I don't get it. So I asked him that day in the car, I said, first of all, why don't you believe in God? And his answer is not an uncommon one. He said, well, we can't see him, so how do we know he's even real? And then he said, how do I know he's with me? And then most of all, he said, where is he? All of these things I admitted were good questions, and that is, it was all about believing and using your faith that you read and you hear about in the Bible. That's what helps us to believe. And then came the teaching moment. I asked him about heaven, and he told me that's where Papa was, in heaven. And he said it with a smile on his face because he knew that he would see him again in heaven. So I said to him, Aiden, if there is a heaven, there needs to be a God. Hmm, he looked at me, 
In other words, we can't believe that our loved ones go to a better place if we don't believe that God has made and prepared that place for us. <coughs> Sorry. Believe that God can take us there and that God has given Jesus' life to make it so. I'm still not sure if he's feeling better about God because now he's a preteen and he knows everything and I know nothing. <laughs> but I do know that we will continue to work on that question and that it's not something that is simply a question or a doubt that he has, that we all have those times. He will learn what we all have learned, that dogs and goldfish and plants and trees and grandmas and grandpas and friends and family and schoolmates, they all die, some sooner, some later, and that believing that God has it covered for us doing does help a bit when we lose someone or something. Together, as if it were happening all over again, as Christians, we spent these last 40 days of Lent remembering how Jesus got to the cross, how he had died this horrific death by crucifixion. <coughs> his death was made sure by a dagger into the side and a large stone to keep his body secure from scavengers. He was dead, all right. Yesterday, it was the day of in-between, the day where we think of him entombed, a body with no companion on Sabbath's rats. It was cold and dark in the tomb. Sadness and shock had overcome his followers, even though he had told them three times and more that he would die and rose, rise. They hid away and waited for Sunday to tend to his broken and lifeless body. Remember, we've always talked about how the disciples aren't always the sharpest crayon in the box, and yet they still believed. And just like you and I, we also have those moments where we doubt as well, don't we? Then, as the writers of the New Testament tell us, he did what no one else had ever done. He rose to life after dying, never to die again. And others were raised to life and then died again. But Jesus of Nazareth, they didn't, he couldn't die again. He rose to live forever, and in doing so, paved the way for us to do the same thing. Now, unlike Hausman, we do not have to say, if you died to see no, no tomorrow, then Jesus rests in place. We do not even say, if you rose Jesus and let down and saved, because... We state it as a fact. Christ is risen, and because he lives, we live also. More than anything, Easter for us Christians means life beyond our graves. We believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. That is the center of our praise this resurrection day. Christ has paved the way for us to live forever in the presence with the risen, glorified bodies that go before us. Easter means something else, too. This Jesus who came to life is the same Jesus who said his, on his Sermon in the Mount that we are to lay up treasures in heaven which cannot be destroyed. This is the same Jesus who taught that our hearts need to be with heaven's treasures, not with the treasures that we have in this life. In other words, in the death-shattering light of Easter, we should be able to see clearly today what matters most in our lives. If our lifespans now go farther and farther beyond, then our perspective should change remarkably. Now, what we treasure most is not our jobs, our homes, our retirement plans, or our bank accounts. That's not what we should treasure, because a recession or depression can wipe those out in just a moment, can't they? Think about it. One in three Americans are just one paycheck away from being homeless. That's scary. We can't rely on the things we have. What we treasure most is not our strong, healthy bodies. Have you noticed how hard it is to keep our body healthy? how it deteriorates towards death no matter what we do. There's no changing that. And maybe you were a 10 at one time, maybe, or a 9 or an 8, but you'll most likely never be a 10 again, at least not until Christ comes in glory and your body is raised to be the glorious thing in heaven, and then we'll probably all be 10s. So think about how much of our lives are spent on things that will not last. One of the silly shows that I like to watch sometimes I know it's, it's a pretty bad one, but it's one I don't have to think about. I can just kind of stare at the TV. It's called the show, uh, the show is called Storage Wars. Any of you watch it? You can admit you watch it, yes. Okay. If you don't watch it, the premise of the reality show is that junk dealers and collectors travel all around to storage units that have been abandoned by people, and they have to bid on these storage units, and they can't go in them. They open the door and they get to see just what is inside the door. 
You can only look in. So they're bidding on these random boxes and crates and furniture that's taken apart, and they have no idea. And they set out a price, and they fight for this, this uh, storage unit. It's crazy. They, they pay tons of money. They have no idea what they're getting. Well, the crazy thing is, is in, two, in 2018, realize that's five years ago, there was a report that self-storage industry reported that Americans now pay over $38 billion a year to have someone else store their earthly treasures. I'll be honest, I have one. <laughs> right? We moved my parents into River Point. Where are we going to put all that stuff? So I have that unit, right? There are 50,000 self-storage facilities in the United States. That was five years ago. I'm sure there's way more than that. And what really makes me shake my head is how so many people have taken their worldly treasures and put them in these storage spaces, and then they abandon them. We don't seem to treasure the things as much as we used to. Like our grandparents, our parents used to do that. Our heirlooms, our family stories seem to be dwindling with every generation that comes. It's sad. So what should matter most? Well, Jesus Christ, of course. He loved us enough to lay down his life for us. Jesus took death down for us. He's our treasure in heaven. He's our first and our last priority. We should live for him. We should strive to be like him. We should discipline ourselves to speak with him in prayer. We should serve others in his name, the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. We should invest in his purposes, his causes. We should give ourselves to what lasts forever. So we began our service with, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Those are the words that are being spoken verbatim from sanctuary to sanctuary, from the east to the west, all over this world today. That same exclamation was being said by those who were there that day. They had given everything to this man, Jesus, their past, their present, even their future. And up until three days ago, that it seemed like a pretty good deal. All that Jesus had asked was that they would have faith, and through most of the time they had believed. But it does help when you get to see a blind man able to see, or a lame person able to walk, or a dead person rise. They believed with all their hearts in the things that they could actually see. So they couldn't help but feeling a little lost and alone after the crucifixion. They had seen Jesus die. Unless it was true what Mary was saying, Mary had gone to the tomb, she'd found it empty, found the grave clothes lying there, and she saw two men in dazzling robes asking her, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. And if that were the case, then he wasn't dead. And if he was alive, then everything was going to be all right. Their hopes and their dreams would be restored. So here's the dilemma that we face on this Easter morning. How do we believe? How do you and I believe? What if I told you that I'm looking up in the balcony and Jesus is sitting right up there in the balcony. Did you look? Did you want to look? I did. Did you believe for even one second that it could be possible or just pass it off as a silly comment? When I was researching this message, I was going through some other sermons and some commentaries and outlines, and it was just crazy because 75% of them, the messages were trying to give people proof that Jesus had died and rose. Since we're a lot like Peter, it really shouldn't be too much of a surprise that they weren't able to do it. We want certainty that it's happened as it was told, but we can't get that. And if you're hoping that I have the answers, the proof that he's risen, you need to think again because I don't either. I have those same questions and doubts that you and Mary and Peter and everyone else who lived the story and heard the story has. How do I keep the faith in this world until I see my God face to face? I'm slowly but surely realizing the value of putting my faith in the mysteries of God and not needing to have proofs positive. I'm becoming more and more comfortable in not having an answer for everything. After all, brothers and sisters in Christ, it is faith in the treasures and mysteries of God that we are saved. The plain fact is that you're here today, and that is all you need. And everything else has been taken care of. Your eternal salvation is secure through the cross and that empty tomb. Talk about a glorious mystery. No greater treasure can be found than a life of everlasting with the God who loves us so. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and forever loving God, oh, how wonderful it is to know that you have given your Son to take away all the sins of the world. We hold you in our hearts and our minds as we cling to the faith that you have given us as a lifetime 
of love and eternal life with you. In your beloved name we pray. Amen. At this time we'll sing the hymn of the day in our offering hymn. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Oh, when I come to die, oh, when I come to die, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. That's my grandson's favorite song, Isaac. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and after he'd given thanks, he said, this is the new covenant of my blood. It was given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we will 
say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. If you are visiting today, all are welcome to receive Holy Communion as believers. Please come forward when the ushers let your pew out. You'll come forward, you will be given a piece of bread to eat, and then you can choose to either drink uh, the wine is the red on the outside, and then there's yellow uh, juice in the middle. And then if you are gluten-free, the gluten-free wafers are on the uh, stand in front there, so just let us know if you need that as well. And if you prefer to not get Holy Communion but want to come up for a blessing, please just put your hands on your chest and we'll do that as well. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sin of the world grant us lives. He is now the living one. From the gloomy halls of death, Christ the conqueror has gone. Pride for honor to the skies of his people yet to rise. Jesus lives, why do you weep? Why that sad and mournful sigh? Christ who died, a brother here, lives, a brother still on high, lives forever to bestow blessings on his church below. Jesus lives, and thus my soul, life eternal waits for you. Joined in Christ your living head, where he is you shall be too. With the Lord at God's right hand, as victoria you shall stand. Jesus lives, let all rejoice, praise him ransomed of the earth, praise him in a nobler song, cherubim of heavenly birth, praise the victor king whose sway sin and death and hell obey. Hallelujah, angels sing, join with us in hymns of praise. Let your chorus swell in strain, which our feebler voices raise. Glory to our God above, and on earth is peace. 
peace and love. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but saving, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every insult, rift, and war, where on all wealth divide. Christ suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives where even hope has died. Women and men in age and youth can feel the spirit, hear the call, and find the ways, the life, the truth revealed in Jesus, freed for all. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love, and praise.
Embody God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Just a few announcements. Um, breakfast is still going on for another 20 minutes, so if you're hungry, they're still serving breakfast over there. Um, because of the breakfast and the multiple services, there is no coffee in between, so the breakfast is the only option. Um, we do have a new schedule in the office now. We are open on Mondays as well, so Monday through Friday, it's always open at least 9 to 1, and then um, some of the days go longer based on what we have going on, but know that the office is here from 9 to 1 if you need something. And then a new exciting thing next Wednesday, we are blessed to um, announce that we have the Easter cantata that Good Shepherd did is coming to sing it for us next Wednesday. They'll be sitting right here. Uh, supper starts at 5 as always, and then they'll be part of the 6 o'clock service, so we'll be able to enjoy, enjoy uh, the Easter celebration that they bring with the, the beautiful vocals that they have. And then finally, the gala is coming up really quick. That's the 22nd. If you haven't gotten your tickets, um, you can either check. I'm sure there'll be somebody out at this table or by the table. Kelsey, you can be there? Okay, Kelsey will be at the table. So if you want to get a ticket yet tonight, you can, or today. Otherwise, you can call the office and we can do it over the phone as well. But we're getting down in numbers, and we want to make sure that our CTK friends and family uh, get the seats first before we go outside of, of the church. So we're getting close to where the point where we need to... to uh, if you get, want a ticket, you need to get one, basically, is what I'm saying. All right, any other announcements that we need to make? I think we're good then. Hear this blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this Easter Sunday, and may he protect you against all sin. Through the resurrection of his son, God granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. You have mourned for Christ's suffering. Now you celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. May Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine is the Glory. And just because we have another service starting in 20 minutes, we're going to sing just the first verse so that we can get the next group in and you guys out and all that good stuff. So one verse of Thine is the Glory. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou death has won. Angels in bright raiment roll the stone away. Kept the folded grave close where thy body lay. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou death has won. Go in peace. Have a wonderful and blessed Easter. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. I look at you and I'm like, oh my Lord. <laughs> Okay, I will do that when I see him. Thanks.